And we're live. Welcome to the Sprint 24 review call for the Common Stack. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we will, I'll just jump right into it. There's a lot going on. So uh, let's dive in. So first off, of course, on my side, it's always the uh, the params action. And we're so excited about collaborative economics is starting for the token engineering commons. This is a, obviously a, a common stack uh, like a push from uh, teachings of Eleanor Ostrom. If people want to really control their uh, it, it, their economies, we want we want bottom up. Uh, you know, participatory de decision making, and that starts at the economic design. So collaborative economics is going to uh, go full force. The Common Stack, in partnership with the TC, built this awesome dashboard, uh, and also with General Magic. And so you can come in here. TC will pick their opening price, their vesting uh, uh, arrangement, which we call token freeze. They'll design the bonding curve, and this is super cool. You can uh, add a step, so you can really explore. The bonding curve, you can say, oh, what happens if uh, someone buys, you know, uh, $10 million? You know, what happens? And then and then it gets added in and you can uh, uh, scroll through the different steps and see, see what happens in this cool chart. Uh, of course, there's the DAO voting, which is the, the God mode of the TEC and every commons. Uh, where we can change the economic the econ economic um, parameters as we evolve and like what settings do we want for that? And then uh, uh, playing with the con with the um, conviction voting parameters too. A lot of interesting. Uh, by having this dashboard, we've already helped Bright ID and a few other groups uh, look at their uh, parameters and see like, oh, maybe this is a little. It's it's really interesting because you can actually see how much does it cost to pull money out of conviction voting. And in Bright ID right now, it only costs three thousand dollars to pull a forty thousand dollar proposal out. And that's a little bit rough. So it's really cool to do the, have these uh, dashboards to start things. Uh, and you know, uh, we we pared everything down to just be a few simple parameters uh, for each system. But there's a lot of background parameters that aren't as important to tweak. So there's a great blog post uh, forum post about the power of defaults. Uh, but there are these default parameters set, and one of the uh, so that. If someone wants to change some of the, the default parameters, they can. They have full access to design the entire configuration space of the economy. And we uh, actually had a really interesting thing come up that we learned, uh, and I had to add this to the dashboard uh, at, the, at the last minute, uh, called the initial buy. So one thing we learned by when in partnership with the TEC, and this is why we partnered with the TEC to launch these things and not didn't just build tools that we thought would work, uh, but actually work with them to do it. And we learned that the DAO itself doesn't hold any TEC tokens. And that how is as a as a collective, how do you organize uh, around this the system without actually holding tokens? There are projects like the Livia's reward system that need to reward people with TEC. And the cheapest time to buy the tokens is right at the beginning. So what's really cool is when uh, we, when the commons is launched, there's this opportunity for you to, at the same time as launching the bonding curve, to actually make the initial buy. And so this is something that organically arose uh, by working with the TC. And uh, the first, we spent about a month going through the different options of what could be done. And uh, we ended up settling on a proposal. Uh, this is a lot of Tam's work, a lot of Mitch's work, uh, major props to everyone involved. Uh, but it, we ended up uh, saying that there will be like a quarter of a million uh, initial buy and that those funds will be split between the reward system and strategic partnerships and making second, secondary market liquidity so that we can have an arbitrage opportunity and the DAO can hold the liquidity itself. So it's super cool proposal. This is the first big proposal coming out of the TEC that uh, has to do with financial resources. So really dive in there and consider voting on this if you see it this weekend. Another thing that uh, is coming out of the common swarm, and which is really critical if we want to, um, you know, one thing that we're doing with the dashboard, uh, with the configuration dashboard, is uh, enabling the community to understand the ec actual econ economic system, and that way they can participate in it and be more informed and be an educated democracy of sorts, right? So. Uh, 
but the tooling of Aragon was very rough. Like if you want to do a complicated vote, you actually need to be a developer and you need to spend time thinking about it. And then sometimes even the developers can't make the votes work as we've seen. So uh, this tool, EVM CRISPR actually makes it as simple. You, you can't be afraid of code, but you can be, co if you are code curious, you could make a complex a vote in a DAO uh, yourself. And it's, it's as simple as saying connect to this DAO. And in this case, it would be like the TE Commons DAO. And then uh, you can install thing, uh, applications. You can grant privileges and, and permissions. You can uh, transfer tokens. You can install applications. Uh, these are all, the, these are, uh, but, and just with one line of code. It's still, you can't, you can't, uh, this is still a, a, a work in progress and uh, One Hive in the gardens uh, community is trying to make it have an even more uh, accessible front end, but we're all, already non-developers are using this to install uh, applications into their Argon DAOs all over the ecosystem. So that's super cool. And uh, we're very happy about that. And another thing that we ran into, it was that uh, the DAOs that we have are all, there's only one front end that's accessible to them. So last month, uh, the, the one hives nodes were down and we had a lot of trouble actually accessing the DAOs that we're trying to use that have $1.5 million in them. And the, uh, so uh, it's, it's, uh, it was very scary. So we actually took the time with the common swarm to build out a completely redundant secondary option where we can uh, even use it to create DAOs uh, or access other DAOs. Uh, and if any, and it has no uh, reliance on the other system. So if anything goes down with one hives front end that we usually use to access it, this one will still be up. If that something goes wrong for this, for um, blossom.software's front end, then one hives will still be up. There, there would have to be a, basically the only redundancy they share is X dot. So as long as XDI is alive, uh, then we have multiple options for our DAOs. And so that, that's really huge for us. And with that, I'll pass it to Tam to talk about the sprints. Cool, and I'm so ready. Continue. Okay, great. So we are in sprint, we're closing sprint 24. Right after this, we'll do our sprint retrospective. Um, and this is Ivy, and Ivy is my hero. She chooses these sprint names, these amazing sprint names we have here. And for this one, she chose revegetation, uh, the process of replanting and rebuilding the soil in a disturbed land. And uh, this, this I really took a, a shine to man-made rewilding projects, I thought is something that resonates with us and our group to repair damages to the landscape due to wild finding, wildfire, mining, flood, or other causes. So uh, if we're doing our review and our retrospective today, that means tomorrow we do our sprint planning. So our sprint backlog uh, is full of issues that will be uh, prioritized and then pulled into our sprint uh, tomorrow. Sorry, Monday morning or Monday, well, it depends on where you are, Monday, full stop. <laughs> Um, and uh, I'd like to personally invite everyone to this book club that is an initiative by two people in the token engineering community, Witwicky and Metodo. Um, it is Asia and Asia, I mean, it is European and Asia Pacific friendly, but it's not so US friendly. So the time is 10 a.m. CET and 7 p.m. in Sydney uh, on Saturdays. And I also bring news from the TEC. So the TEC has um, most of the, uh, the majority of the working groups have drafts for their funding that will be requested once the Commons upgrade happens. And conviction voting is live uh, in accepting proposals for funding. Um, these six have uh, pretty good drafts right now. Uh, I should take that off. Um, and Labs and Omega is in progress. Uh, the th other three working groups will not be using um, conviction voting for funding in a continuous way, but will um, use the reward system and have one-off project proposals as necessary. Angela Kreitenweiss also joined us this um, week for the TEC Stewards Council uh, to discuss bringing um, the TE and TEC com uh, communities closer together uh, to um, uh, 
help the robust and active, I mean, to ask the robust and active TEC community to support TE initiatives across the ecosystem and especially for funding for proposals in other DAOs. And we came up with a very long list of things that we can do to, to help each other and to, to bring our communities closer together. I also want to share that uh, the Communitas Working Group is taking on onboarding, uh, which is one of the pain points that many DAOs have. And the TEC has um, many times been told that it is one of the warmest communities to join and welcoming communities to join, uh, thanks to the cultural builds pattern that we built here at the Common Stack. Uh, and the TEC has been refining and perfecting based on empirical data that they have accumulated from actually implementing the process. Uh, we are going to be um, starting with day zero onboarding and then looking at uh, multiple steps from there. Uh, praise really goes to MS, LBS, Gideon, Vivi, Aloysius, Nick and Eduardo for their plentiful efforts here. It's looking really great so far. And with that, I'll pass to Luvia. Thanks, Tim. Sharing my screen. It feels really slow on my computer right now. Okay, right. So I'll start sharing a little bit of um, the decision making process that we are building for the TEC, but also taking into perspective the polycentric governance aspects that we've been talking for a long time in the common stack that Jess has been writing about. And um, I mean, it was the topic that kicked out governance and there's so much of research just on um, governance that we can start looking into what are all of the tools that are available for us to use and what is the best way to use them without having one single point of failure. So we don't want to have only one way to make decisions. And if that way is a little troubled or something happens, we are kind of uh, depending on it. So what are all of the modularities we can add to our governance configuration? And especially thinking to have spaces where cultural decisions um, can exist as, as their own purpose of that tool. So we don't, we don't only have um, a funding stream for proposals, but we also have um, a tool and a process that can be used for cultural decisions because they are so important also. So uh, we're looking into starting with advice process as um, the first step to anything else. So, it can be a small impact decision where you ask feedback just for peers. It can be a medium impact where um, it would make sense to ask that in a working group or to open a topic in the agenda to start debates. And then we can have a large impact decision that needs to be posted in the forum for the awareness of the whole community. And that decision can be a funding proposal that would require the awareness of the whole community. It could be something technical that needs to be changed. And then for that, someone would make a signal proposal and then that can be taken by the developers and um, put into the TAO voting that doesn't have an interface yet. So it needs to have a more technical process. And then we have snapshot that we, we use mostly for cultural decisions. So for signaling, for large impact cultural decisions and uh, also for the runoff of the token log. So we've been using token log uh, for a while now and we see it's a great tool for crowd proposal making. So if a lot of people want to submit many proposals that need to be curated and a final decision needs to come from there, we use token log and then have the runoff on snapshot. So this is a little framework that is being um, worked on with the designers now that will create an infographic so it will be easy to have like quick access to uh, governance and in the TEC and hopefully people will like find their ways to 
make decisions without so much overhead all the time. And speaking about that, uh, we've been picking the parameters for the hatch DAO and now the commons upgrade. And why not picking the parameters for snapshot as well? That is our uh, cultural tool. So this Parameters couldn't be, not that I know of, they can't be put into code on Snapshot. So they would need to be monitored by SoftGov and transparency. But once we choose what is the minimum quorum, uh, what, is the, what is the support required, what is the duration of those votes, uh, we'll have a way to understand when a vote passed or not. So do we want to have 88% support required? Like, do we want um, the votes that are casted to have like a high approval rate, like we have in the hatched out parameters, or we want uh, to be lower? So um, I made this post just for us to start this conversation and use the polling in the forum just as a signaling process. And we can move on with that, uh, with that decision soon. And a few other things is that uh, the DAO reward systems research initiative from the T Academy um, open uh, signups now. So you can sign up to join us in this program. It's going to last 12 weeks. Um, we're preparing a whole conference of uh, reward system uh, lectures. So it will be super exciting all about reward systems here. And we have. Um, Ocean DAO that is going to be with us as a partner that uh, we approved a proposal recently in the Ocean DAO uh, grant. So this will be super exciting. Um, Signups close on November 7th. So there is a little bit of time, but hurry up because there is a lot of interest in this. And just to, to close us, um, the Graviton training is going. And uh, we had a session with Lorelai, that is an advisor of the Common Stack. Um, and she gave a great, uh, great introduction to uh, alternative dispute resolution and re regenerative justice. So it was really cool. Keep it up with uh, Governouts, um, I mean, with uh, Graviton, with Graviton training, that it's going to happen on next Tuesday. And uh, we have a new member of the case studies, uh, that is Carol. We onboarded her this week and she will be helping us uh, writing uh, all of the pieces for understanding a little bit better the process of the TEC. And with that, I will pass to Jess. Thanks, Livy. Awesome work there. So much to cover. You're doing so many things and in the governance realm is super um incredible for the space and the ecosystem to have some of those patterns so uh, for me i've had a little bit of mixed work the last couple of weeks but i'm in the sparkle verse because i'm talking nfts today and we're going to have a little gallery showing for you impromptu i'm going to share screen can you see all right awesome so you are looking at the Miami Crypto EXP Metaverse. Um, this is an event that um, I am participating in on behalf of the Common Stack. Um, and we are running an NFT um, impact uh, gala and auction. So we're basically auctioning off in the physical world as well as the metaverse uh, NFTs to raise money for over a dozen really incredible impact organizations and charities. Um, from around the world, including common stacks. So I just wanted to show you for fun. Um, this is what it looks like in the virtual gallery. And these are not our art pieces. I'll give you a sneak peek. Um, our pieces are this one from Adam Gross. Very cool. Um, super neat. I love this. Uh, and then these are a sneak peek because they're going to be minted. Um, then we have this piece from our friend Sarah Harrell, who's a very talented artist in BC. And we have this from Brown to Pink, who is a pretty famous NFT artist. And um, 
we have this from our common stack contributor justice who is part of metis so first nations canadian artists who made this to raise money for um protecting old growth forests so we have some really incredible art and incredible projects um, like i said over a dozen represented with our partners at project arc and impact nft alliance so um if you're in Miami nearby, want to go, um, come join us at the event. I'll be speaking with Dr. Sarah Mansky, who wrote the challenges, um, approaches and challenges in scaling the global commons paper with Jeff Emmett. She and I will be tag teaming a talk on crypto commons at the gathering. So it's um, Miami, what is it? Miami crypto that world, um, Miami crypto exp. So you can come and join us. And if you can't make it to the event physically, they have this online marketplace where you'll actually be able to bid and the art from anywhere around the world so even if you can't make it to the event and you want to buy oh there's a carrot that's not ours um if you want to buy any of uh these beautiful pieces to raise money for common stack or some really cool environmental impact orgs you can actually join so we'll be tweeting when the auction opens you can jump on this website surf around the galaxy and put in your bid to get your hands on one of these beautiful um, NFTs and also helping a really great cause. Um, and like 90% of the funds are going to the impact org. So, um, okay, I shouldn't say 90. Part of that is going to the artists as well, because of course, a lot of them are doing great work and, um, you know, are making a living off this. So it's split between the artists and the impact orgs, but a large portion of the funds going to the impact orgs. Um, so yeah, that is a really cool event. And skipping over to another very sexy development, automated regression markets. So um, working on, uh, let's see, this very uh, piece, I, I wanted to pull up Sargam, flanking um, by the, the common stack research crew and partners at Block Science. We're gonna be dropping this article on automated regression markets. What's that? Uh, it's a new price discovery mechanism for semi fungible assets. So I know that's a mouthful semi fungible assets. If you think like a house, um, they all have different values. Um, and this is a way to automate and scale um, some of those markets with semi fungible assets. And the first use case is going to be innovating energy markets. So right now doing some CAD CAD modeling, um, looking at this uh, multi attribute AMM tool. Um, I won't go into too much further detail, but that article will be dropping um, today. So we will be uh, sharing that around um, some pretty interesting research coming out, a paper by um, Dr. Michael Zarga, Matt Stevenson with Plank and Jamshid Shorish. Um, they wrote an academic paper about this kind of fungibility spectrum um, in the deep uh, with some deep math, but this is kind of bringing that to the level of, okay, so how can this algorithm be applied and what is a potential use case and innovation um, in an existing market um, like energy credits, carbon offsets. So it's some pretty interesting uh, research into the possibilities of some of these new um, bonding curve and AMM mechanisms and how they can be applied in different ways. So you can look out for that. Um, the next thing I wanted to mention is governance as well. Um, that uh, I'm working with Livia and the Governance Crew to the Academy and a few others. And we will be organizing a panel um, about unconditional basic income for December. So you can look out for that. I'm working on that right now. And um, the last thing, my brain is not working so well today. Okay, last thing. Yes, I don't want to forget. That's why I'm looking at my notes. Is uh, our partners over at IBSO. They are every week having the Earth State Briefing, which is sharing really cool news from um, Web3 regenerative projects. So this is a call out. If you have any thought leadership articles in this realm, if you would like to be uh, featured in one of their catalytic conversations, or you have a really cool blog that you've read that you think should be shared uh, wider, anything related to community currencies, um, Regen, regenerative projects or uh, impact projects in the Web3 space. You can get in touch with this lady here, Matilda DV, number 1501 on Discord. She's in our comments at Discord. So if you want to reach out to Matilda, if you've seen a cool article, if you have something you want to share to a wider audience that's related to um, Web3 innovators and change makers. 
So there's an opportunity there for you all watching. Um, if you have something, give her a shout. And with that, I will pass it to Maria. Oh, Maria is not here today. Yanesi. Is Maria here also? No, we, she's Just not here. Yanesi, Maria, I think Maria is actually under the weather. So we'll send Maria um, good wishes. I saw her name in my notes. So good wishes out to Maria to feel better soon. And with that, I'll pass to Yanesi. <laughs> yep, awesome. Well, <laughs> We have a, a lot of things uh, to share from the narcissist side. Um, I'm having like a, a little uh, issues to present information. I don't know, Tam, if you can help me with <laughs> But um, yeah, so, so far we have been working in the design of uh, face of the narcissist dashboard which is an incredible job uh, doing by Christopher and together where we were, we shared uh, several ideas about how it uh, should uh, look like. Uh, we discussed that about uh, colors, branding, and the new uh, look and feel that this amazing work uh, should have. Um, it also was a great opportunity to express how we can we would like to see reflected all these ideas. So, awesome. <laughs> and on the other hand, um, we have been working in an internal report on, on Google Data Studio. That's something that I, I would like to, to share with you. Uh, uh, it is an internal report where we can uh, see everything, all the, all the stats of the current uh, trusted seat members in just one site. It's just, it's just black for me, actually. Is, uh, Tam, are you the one sharing? I am not sharing. I don't have access to that right now. Okay. Oh my God. Okay, well, <laughs> maybe I can, I can share with you uh, that information later. But uh, yeah, it, it, it is a, a, a great report. Uh, we, we can see uh, like, all the important stats of, of the trusted seat members, uh, all the... Um, uh, tendons of uh, these uh, members uh, and it is a, a, a whole report about uh, all the important uh, information about that and in the coming weeks and other, in order in order of ideas <laughs> in the coming weeks we will be reviewing our onboarding on this card and we we would like to bring improvements in the process of getting involved in the commons stack. So, and well, yeah, I think that, that that's all of from my side. I pass it to uh, Kenny. Uh, hi guys. Um, so it's been wonderful from here. We first started with um, more engagement, uh, engaging contents. Well, we rolled out during the spring. So we decided to play around content. We created what we call the, the commons room. So on the commons room, we just drop a question and then people get to come on board, share their thoughts on issues, you know, all of that. And then we also started from our library, taking you back into time. Perhaps the first AMA that we had a common stack, the first meeting, you know, all the things you, if you know, some, some way somehow just to, wow, oh, I remember this, some way to just remind your memory and all of that. So it's been fun and we'll be trying some amazing things um, um, with the content is sprint. And amazingly, many of you have been jumping on it. Like on Twitter, we have, uh, uh, we have 48 tweets so far with uh, 45,000 plus impressions. And the beauty of it is you do not just in um, share the, the thoughts or engage. You also get to check out our profile pictures, our profile and what we've written. So our profile visits this uh, sprint was big, like 8,950. That's like amazing. So like 10 persons are checking our profile every second. So that's huge. We appreciate you. And then we have 323 new followers, uh, bringing us to a total of 4,119 followers at the present. So... Yippee, we're rocking it. And um, 
part of the very things we shared this spring that really, 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 really you should go check out is the a post capitalist guide uh, that uh, Crypto Commoners uh, Only Wants the F by Sarah Mansky. You should check that out. It takes you into this amazing CCG uh, 21. Uh, uh, um, crypto commoners, uh, uh, commons gathering, like everything that happened from the airport, like you're reading that like a novel. And it, it, apart from the fact that you have big terminologies, you just enjoy every bit. You should go check it out. It's on our page. In fact, it's even pinned on our LinkedIn. So you should go check it. And Griff and I started working on improving our FAQ process this sprint. It was Two hours of amazing search. We're looking at things. We, you know, very cool. So we will share that once it's done. So you could always, you know, check them out. And um, also our LinkedIn page is up and running. Many of you are dropping by to say hello. So we have like 71 of you dropped in during this sprint, which is cool. And we have 11 new followers, uh, rounding our numbers to 303 followers at the present on LinkedIn, which is cool. So we appreciate you and most we appreciate that you engage with our content on LinkedIn. Currently we have uh, 1,400 yeah, care impressions so on, on LinkedIn. So that's huge just from a spread and we love what you're doing with us. So keep rocking and remember this is engaging and we'll keep engaging, uh, dropping more engaging content. So when you see one, make sure you engage with it and then tag your friends as well. So I'll pass back to Tab. Uh, I can steal it. I, I can steal it because I have, there was, you know, every week we get to show off all of this work that was done, but so much of it wasn't done by us. We just get to take all the credit. Uh, but no, actually we try to give credit where credit is due with praise. So I want to praise uh, Pedro, Vitor, Fabio, Mitch, Marco, Pedro, Nugget, Mount Manu, and Lauren for the amazing dashboard work that they've been putting in you know, many last many months to get us to this place. Uh, Mitch and Zeptimus and Lauren for helping with the initial buy. Uh, Sam and Paulo for their incredible work on EVM CRISPR and, and making the redundant DAO solution for everybody using XDI DAOs. Uh, Edu, LB, MS, Gideon, Aloysius, and Viviv for uh, all the communis, Communitas support. And, uh, and praise Tam for adding Viviv in there. Uh, and I want to praise uh, Chewy, Zep, Wonka, Ed, Eduardo, and Santi for making all the awesome working group proposals. Wesley for token launch. Uh, and and which we use heavily and uh, balancer lab for snapshot which everyone uses these days uh also ocean dow governance te academy and boson for taking on the governance uh reward dow research and uh, uh lorelei for pushing the graviton training class this round uh carol for taking the deep dive into the case study with us uh especially and of course praising nate and kelsey for holding down the case studies of the TEC. Uh, major praise to uh, Dr. Sarah Mansky for building an epic social impact event that bridges the metaverse to the Floridaverse. And uh, Brown to Pink and Justice and Adam Gross and Sarah Harrell for making beautiful NFT art pieces that will hopefully raise some funding for the common stack. Super cool. Uh, Zargum, Matt Stevenson, Jeff, and John Sheed for their work researching liquidity markets for NFTs. Very, very important work. Uh, Governance and the TE Academy for pushing to create a UBI panel. Uh, Sean and Matilda DV from IXO for uh, using their platform to push the whole crypto social impact space forward. Uh, Christopher, Maria, Dan, and Jeff for supporting the Trusted Seed dashboard, and especially uh, Maria and Dan for pushing uh, forward that data on the early dashboard protocol uh, prototype. And uh, Chris and Jeff for the amazing interview in back in 2019 uh, that got so much engagement this this round. And of course, uh, Dr. Sarah Mansky for our awesome CCG article. Uh, yeah, and uh, of course, also major praise to Dan and Chris. They're they're representing us right now in Portugal and, and at LizCon and all the other Lisbon events, and uh, and are building handover documents right now because this is one of the last weeks this might be the last review that they work fully for the common stack so uh lots of love to them and also as just said uh, uh maria uh, who also works for the common stack has covid right now and uh and asthma so our heart our hearts and minds are going out to them send positive thoughts uh, i'm sure she'll be okay but still uh you know uh we definitely want to send lots of love out there so uh thank you and